come to mathematics with amps grade 10 the real number system part 2 don't forget to give me a huge like and to subscribe all right have a good look at this uh, diagram which was in a previous video so basically we have the real number system which consists of rational and irrational numbers and then of course on the other side we have the so-called imaginary or non-real numbers so the imaginary or non-real numbers are like for instance square root of a negative number and division by zero when you look at irrational and rational then of course rational consists of natural numbers whole numbers integers and so forth and also the decimals which have a pattern like the recurring decimals and then irrational will be examples like with the value of pi square root of two where the decimals are non-recurring and there's no pattern let's look at the example find a rational number between five over seven and a three quarter Start by getting the lowest common denominator of the fraction and rewrite them over this denominator. Like 5 over 7 is the same as 20 over 28, for instance. A 3 quarter is the same as 21 over 28. Since we can't find any 28 between 20 and 28 and 21, 28, we can try doubling the denominator and therefore also the numerator. Right. For instance, 20 over 28 becomes 40 over 56. 21 over 28 becomes 42 over 56. Now we have a fraction, namely 41 over 56, between the two fractions. Let's look at example 4 there. Between which two consecutive integers do the following irrational numbers lie? Look at the square root of 12, for instance. Now, 12 itself, right, lies between 9 and 16. So the square root of 12 lies between the square root of 9 and the square root of 16. Take note, 9 is a rational number and 16 is a rational number. I could not choose 11 because 11 wasn't rational. I couldn't choose 10. Neither could I choose 13, 14 or 15. So you must go to the next rational number. So there you are. Square root of 9 is 3. Square root of 16 is 4. So the square root of 12 lies between 3 and 4. Look at B, the square root of uh, 12. So again, the first uh, rational number to the left of the square root of 12 should be 9, and to the right should be 16. So there you are. The square root of 12 lies between negative 3 and negative 4, if I bring in the negative 12. C, the square root of the cube root of 20, right? So 20 lies between 8 and 27. Remember, we're dealing with cube root now. So I must choose 8, which is a, a rational number. Cube root of 8 is 2. Cube root of 27 is 3. So therefore, it lies between 2 and 3. If you look at D, minus 2 times pi, where minus 2 times pi is minus 6,2833185, if you use your calculator. And that lies between negative 7 and negative 6. So there you are. 2 pi lies between negative 7 and negative 6. Rounding off numbers to a certain decimal place. The rules for rounding off numbers to a certain decimal place are as follows. Count to the number of decimal places after the comma that you want to round off to. Look at, the, look at the digit to the right of this decimal place. If it is lower than 5, drop it and all the digits to the right of it. If it's a 5 or more, then add one digit to the digit immediately to the left of it and drop it and all digits to the right of it. If necessary, keep or add zeros as placeholders. Example. Run of the following numbers to the number of decimal places indicated. Let's look at A. 4,31437, round off to two decimal places. So what do you do? You go to the third decimal, which is 4, which is below 5. So you drop the 3 and the 7. Well, you drop the 4, 3, and the 7. Look at B, 1,777, three decimals. So you go to the fourth 7, 
which is higher than 5. So therefore, you round the third 7 up to 8. Go to C, 365,1534, one decimal place. So you go to the second decimal, which is a 5. So you round up. So 365,1 becomes 365,2. 594,2 to two decimal places. Well, you add two zeros, and you'll see that that zero got no value. So therefore, 5, 594,20. E, 12,07963, three decimal places. Go to the fourth decimal, which is a six. So therefore, you round up. So that six makes the nine a 10, and the 10 makes the seven an eight. So therefore, 12,08. F, 9,991. Eight, one decimal place, you go to the second decimal, which is a 9. So that 9 is round up, makes the next 9 a, 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 a 1, a 10, and that 10 makes the 9 a 10. So therefore, the answer is a whole number, 10. All right, I would like you to have a look at this exercise. Again, it's in your interest if you work through all the examples carefully and make sure that you understood them. Good luck. Uh, this is Ahmed Suleiman from uh, Mathematics with Ms. I hope you've enjoyed this very short video. Please don't forget to give me a huge like and subscribe.